Welcome to Next Tech. Apple has brought many a game-changing transformations to the world. Some of the biggest being the iPhone, which essentially changed the smartphone industry and connected the entire world with a tiny device in our pockets. Any other exists, such as the iPod that revolutionized music on the go, the Mac laptops bringing an unprecedented efficiency to the laptop world, and they are not ready to stop just yet. Recently, Apple has declared that it would go from using Intel chops in their devices to producing their own in-house Apple Silicon chips throughout the following two years. Apple said that Macs with in-house silicon will show up in the market before the finishing of 2020. And that did happen with the launch of the MacBook Air 13-inch MacBook Pro and a Mac Mini, which has been a great success. But is it as quick as Apple claims? Will it run our applications appropriately? In today's video, we are talking about how M1 chips change the entire industry. Make sure you watch this video till the end to see all the changes this chip is bringing to the new Apple products. What is the significance of Apple Silicon? After the Apple Silicon and the more extensive industry move from ARM to x86, Apple's change from Intel to in-house Silicon is critical. They haven't made a move this big in 15 years. Not since it changed from IBM's PC power engineering to Intel in 2005-2006. The PowerBook G4 was one of the last power PC based Mac workstations before Apple changed to Intel in 2006. This change is likewise critical on the grounds that it puts conventional computers under everyone's attention without precedent for 10 years. Devendra Hadawar from Engadget summarizes it impeccably. Over the last decade, it seems like Apple has paid less attention to Macs as it focused all its energy on the iPhone and iPad. The touch bar remains incredibly divisive, the company stubbornly stuck with shallow, error-prone keyboards, and the less said about the trash can Mac Pro, the better. You can think of the M1 as a course correction. Now Apple has a way to genuinely innovate with every aspect of its Macs, right down to the design of its CPU. So what is the M1 chip? M1 is the name of Apple's new in-house Mac chip. This ARM-based central processor is being utilized in Mac's entrance-level Macintoshes, including the MacBook Air, Mini, and Pro. Indeed, Apple is obscuring the line among shopper and pro gadgets. All chips have trade-offs. Regularly, it comes down to execution versus proficiency. Low-force Intel chips may give better battery life, yet execution endures a shot. The past Intel MacBook Air was an ideal model. M1 conveys an extensive exhibition advantage and exceptional battery life. As verified by Ars Technica, M1 stays cooler than Intel in any event when under load. Apple's new M1 framework on a chip SoC is positively not one of those low execution ease endeavors. The M1 is planned starting from the earliest stage to be an incredible and rather bargain free rivalry for conventional PC design. Apple selected a fanless plan in the MacBook Air. As my digital broadcast co-host Chris Hans noticed, the MacBook Air is basically an iPad in a clamshell configuration, running Mac OS. The fan in the MacBook Professional and Mini permits the M1 chip to run quicker and for a much longer time, prior to choking down because of warmth. Notwithstanding, what's important is that the difference is very small. The MacBook Air actually conveys amazing execution, and an easygoing client likely wouldn't take note. A steady among the surveys so far is that the M1 chip clobbers practically all Intel x86 chips available, with a couple of exceptions. As indicated by Mac Insider, Macintosh has never put a solid accentuation on the gigahertz race. The M1 has one design on the whole three machines, which means the client can possibly change the smash and SSD arrangements when buying another PC. I'm sure future machines will take into consideration more arrangements, yet for customer machines, this is a revisitation of structure for Apple. The less different choices help remember the 4x4 lattice, which was expected to work on Mac's confounding product offering. Shoppers couldn't care less about gigahertz, so why not simplify it for them? Regarding crude execution, the M1 chip is mind-boggling. As indicated by Apple Insider, it beats essentially every Intel contender. In terms of single core performance, the M1 MacBook Pro outshines all of the Macs on test, with a score that is a clear 54% better than its nearest rival, the 16-inch MacBook Pro. This makes it faster and a relatively recent Intel Core i9 and even the MacBook Pro Xeon. A chip family generally considered to be a workhorse of processing, wrote Apple Insider in a recent article. For the full M1 benchmarks, Six Tones and ARS Technica have the most point-by-point -point breakdowns. Battery life is likewise improved on account of M1. 
Now, I've perused audits by veteran Macintosh clients like John Gruber, just as a few expert video editors and picture takers. Jason Snell from Six Tones reports nine and a half long stretches of battery life and the new Air and a smidget more for the new 13-inch Pro. Colin Smith from Photoshop Bistro announced a little battery channel in any event during the underlining arrangement of the PC, which included downloading and introducing gigabytes of applications. Office laboratories can hope to get a full workday out of the battery. Maybe what is generally amazing about the M1 chip is its capacity to stay cool under load. As any cheerful MacBook Ace 16-inch proprietor would tell you, this PC by and large runs cool. However, it surely heats up when trading sound or video or when working in Photoshop. John Gruber noticed that the M1 never truly warmed up during standard use, and scarcely so during multi-center benchmarking. How the M1 utilizes memory has additionally changed. With the brought together memory design, M1, just like the Intel chips, has a computer processor and coordinated design. The PC memory is shared by both processor centers and illustration centers, as per Jason Snell. Be that as it may, this is the place where the closeness appears. But in shifting its terminology to describe a unified memory architecture, Apple's trying to point out that the M1's approach is a bit different. The biggest difference is that in the M1, the memory is a part of the M1 architecture itself. There's no memory slot or slots on the motherboard of an M1 Mac, nor is there an area where a memory chip has been permanently soldered on. Instead, the memory is integrated into the same package that contains the M1 itself, says Jason Snell from Six Tones. This implies that the Mac design you pick is conclusive. Mac PCs have had fastened memory for quite a while, making updates troublesome or inconceivable with the exception of the most capable PC pros. Presently, the possibility of redesigning memory is gone in light of the fact that everything lives on a solitary chip. As far as everyday execution, there isn't anything to show that the normal client would even realize these Macs run on another design. Rosetta 2, Apple's interpretation programming, permits Apple Silicon Macs to run x86 applications. All signs highlight generally the same, or somewhat slower, execution while running x86 applications on the M1. Six Shadings announced x86 applications running at around 80% as quick as local code. Remember, this 80% was still quicker than numerous Intel Macs. Applications intended for Apple Silicon run impressively quicker, so things will just improve with time. Here is the thing that John Gruber said about Rosetta 2. Rosetta performs incredible, and similarity is apparently consistent. This is a specialized masterpiece, a homer for the Apple that will generally go unheralded by the run-of-the-mill clients on the grounds, but the whole point is that they shouldn't notice or mind. One benefit Apple Silicon devices will have over their Intel brethren is the capacity to run iPhone and iPad applications on the desktop. It's up to the engineer if these applications show up on the Mac application store, however, the possibility is fascinating. The unavoidable issue going into this progress was, would Apple be able to tops ARM-based chips for a PC or workstation? Without a doubt, yes. Apparently, Apple Silicon has no issue scaling up to the rival area class x86 chips. Likewise, remember that the M1 is the passage level chip. In his YouTube video, Colin Smith said, current Intel Macintosh proprietors shouldn't run out and buy an M1 gadget. Hence, envision what an M2 chip would resemble. Imagine a scenario where the iMac ships with two M1 chips. All we have is motivation to speculate that the exhibition hole between Apple Silicon and Intel will extend with the presentation of expert evaluation chips. Paving the way of the arrival of Apple Silicon Mac's tech savants were theorizing that Mac would present a drastically updated PC suspension for every single impending PC. These gadgets are indistinguishable from their Intel archetypes, and they even incorporate similar horrendous 720p webcams. It really just comes down to cost, and the way that these are first-gen items. At the point when an organization overhauls a gadget that requires significant changes to the assembling interaction and build cost, considering the current Mac PC plans aren't excessively old, there's no motivation to toss them out. Likewise, original Apple items are basically open betas, notwithstanding the exhibition or cool factor that would be best to dodge first-gen Apple items. These gadgets are frequently defective. Some prominent models, not incredibly first-gen Mac items, incorporate the iPad, iPhone, 2016 MacBook Pro, and so on. Regardless of whether the first-gen gadget is dependable, Apple will in general be traditionalist in its underlying plans. It will not be until the second-age Apple Silicon Macs that we will begin to see new shape factors. 
Given how quick and cool these chips run, you can hope to see a more slender and lighter gadgets on both the customer and pro side. This is still the testing phase, however, so far for Apple, is hitting it out of the park. This brings us to the end of the video. What do you think? Do you think that Apple will disrupt the industry with these new chips? When Intel has been the leading player in the market for so long? How many chances does Apple have to capture the chip market in your opinion? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Share it with your friends and check out the other videos as well. See ya!